Hey everybody, good morning. It is 10 o'clock and it's time for 10 to 10. Hope you're doing great today. Hope you have a great uh, evening and a great morning. start to your, your day. Great morning. It is September 1st. Can you believe it? September 1st? I don't know. Sometimes I just think days are just kind of blending in. Uh, but it is September 1st and uh, glad you guys are getting on this morning. It's good to see you. Patsy, good to have you on here. Uh, Carrie, I hope you're doing well and uh, things are going well with your family. Everybody's good. Uh, Ray and Claude, good to have you guys on here this morning. Hope everything is going well for you guys. Good to see you, see you on here. Carrie and Debbie, good to have you guys and good to see you on Sunday. Uh, thanks for being there. And uh, anyway, it's good to see many of you guys coming on Sundays. And I know it's just going to get more and more until everybody starts feeling a little bit more comfortable coming to church. And uh, I don't know that some of y'all go to other churches, so I uh, just know that uh, God's in control. So trust Him in everything that you uh, you do. And uh, anyway, it's uh, it's good to uh, to have you guys on here. Uh, Why, well, yeah, Shelly and Kelly's birthday. That's right. Oh man, I have to shoot them a little note there and uh, let them know that uh, I miss seeing them. And uh, anyway, happy birthday to them. Uh, Lisa, I hope you and Dave are doing good. Uh, Beverly, good to have you on here. hope you're uh, doing uh, great and having a good day this morning, and uh, everything is going well. All right, so here we go. Uh, here's my joke for the day. This comes from Angelin Wilson sent this to me. So, Angelin, thank you for sending this. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, it just is this. Why couldn't the green pepper practice archery? Why couldn't the green pepper practice archery? Well, because he didn't habanero. Habanero? It's a kind of pepper. Get it? Habanero? Okay. All right. That's a that's a good one. Uh, you know, I did tell that one to Amy yesterday, last night, and she just gave me a blank stare. So and I'm pretty sure that you guys are giving me that same blank stare right now. But anyway, Angela, thanks for the joke. I uh, appreciate that. Cindy, good to have you on here. Uh, and uh, Pr uh, Priscilla, good to have you on here too. And I uh, hope you're doing well. Kayla, good to see you. Leanne, hope you're having a great morning. Good to have you on here. All right. So, hey, turn your Bibles, if you have it, or your device to Second Corinthians again. We're going to be back in it today. Chapter 3, though, we're going to go uh, to, closer to the front of the chapter in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 12. We're going to look at verses 12 through 18 and just kind of talk through one of my favorite verses. Uh, I say that all the time, and, and verse 18 is going to be the focus of it. So uh, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 12. Here's what God's Word says, and I'm using the ESV version, uh, the ES ver version, I should say, ESV. Anyway, all right. Uh, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. I love that. Since we have such a hope. Listen, what is this hope? Uh, it's Jesus. Uh, it is this new covenant that we have in Him, this new relationship that allows us to have this relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. And because of that, we have an incredible hope that we're not stuck in our sins or in the, the grind of having to perform for God, that we have freedom in Him. Listen, that's our hope, and it's not just a eternal hope, which is awesome, but it's a present hope that we have with Him, that every day we can experience this relationship with Jesus, that we're not uh, having to do a checklist. Uh, we're not having to bring sacrifices, physical sacrifices to find favor with God. Listen, we are in the eyes of God. We are uh, forgiven and cleansed because of Jesus, the new covenant relationship with him so we are we have a hope and we're very bold with that we're able to proclaim the gospel uh, not because we're perfect but because Jesus is perfect and in him we have forgiveness and so it goes on it says not like Moses who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end but their minds were hardened for to this day. When they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. Right, let's stop there just for a second and explain. You know, in Exodus, it talks about Moses going into the tent and meeting with God and uh, and he would come out, and uh, when he would meet with God, his face would just shine with the glory of God. You know, when we were, would read that, and, and many times we think of that, uh, you know, Moses would put a veil over his face, and we always thought, 
you know, we, I don't know who we is, but we, you know, I always thought he would walk out with the veil over his face so not to cause fear and trembling uh, for the people. They see the, the power and the glory of God on his face. But this gives us a different picture. Why Moses put on the veil is because that glory was fading. Uh, once he stepped away from that time of meeting, he would come out and that glory would fade away. And you know what? What's interesting about that is it, there's almost a sense of yeah, of of dread or or hopelessness when that 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 glory would fade away, and and so uh, he he would cover that. He didn't want to see that. He didn't want people to see that happening. What's beautiful about that for us today is that we get to be in the presence of Jesus all the time. We get to be, behold His glory all the time, and, and that's amazing. But he didn't get to experience experience that in in the Old Testament, and so that's why he would put the veil over his face so they wouldn't see that shining glory fade. Um, you know, we now get to experience the glory of Jesus that endures all time, which is incredible, incredible and amazing. Uh, and, uh, great, and we're so grateful for that. And what's interesting is that even to this day, it says the Jews still have a veil over their heart uh, because they don't know Jesus. Uh, they haven't come to the realization that Jesus is the Messiah, that He has come to take away our sins, to uh, give us that hope of, eternal, of eternity. And so in Him, we see uh, His glory and experience His glory daily. And so because they haven't recognized that and because they haven't uh, accepted that, this veil is, is over their heart uh, and they can't see that. But it says this, it says, um, starting back uh, in uh, verse 16, let's look at that again. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. So what does that mean? It means when we accept Jesus Christ, that veil uh, is, is removed of understanding and of, uh, of life change and, and, and really the, the fact that Jesus is transforming us. And so when we accept Him, that veil is removed. And we see His truth. We see His glory. We see how great and powerful He is. And we experience the joy and the peace that come with Him and the hope that we have in Him. And so when you accept Jesus, your life changes and, and from the inside out. And that's the picture we have here. And it says, now the, Lord, who is, uh, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled face. Now let's go to this is verse 18. And we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit uh, so let's stop there just as we end this thing and think about what this verse is saying and we with unveiled faith if you know Jesus uh, you can experience him you experience his glory and who he is daily all the time in your life he dwells within us through the Holy Spirit and, and it says this, it says that we, we can experience the freedom we have in Him, uh, the freedom from guilt and shame that we experience in relationship. We experience that daily. And it, and it says this, we're being transformed into the same image. So we, uh, we see the very glory of God through Jesus Christ and how powerful and amazing and beautiful He is. But we're being transformed into that same image. You know, from, from Genesis, we, we recognize that sin nature that we have in us. We have marred that image of God because of sin. Well, listen, Jesus rescues us. He takes away that bondage of sin. And then daily, we're being transformed more and more and more into His image. And then someday, uh, when we see Him face to face, we'll be made perfect like Him, and, and that'll be amazing. But now we're being transformed daily and daily. But li listen, here's, here's the thing that I want you to hear this morning. Um, what, and I read this just the other day. I thought, that, this is pretty powerful. There's a world out there that is, has, has a veiled face in this, or a veiled heart, and can't see the true Jesus and see who He is. They, uh, because of the hardness of their heart, whatever it may be, just sin, uh, there is a veil over their heart. So w how do they get that picture of Jesus? Well, it, it's us. It's those that believe in Jesus and follow after Jesus. We are that image of Jesus to this world, and we should be reflecting Him and reflecting His glory uh, to this world. That's our, that's our responsibility. That's our job. That's our mission as believers, to reflect that glory. Why? Because He's rescued us. He's taken away the veil, and we can show Him to 
everybody at all times. We don't have to be like Moses and cover it up. Uh, listen, we can take it off so that people can see Jesus in us. And we're getting becoming more and more and more like Jesus, that glory enduring forever, not, being, not fading away, but enduring forever. That's what we experience in Jesus. So uh, be bold, be confident as you live out your faith today. Know that Jesus is shining through you and, uh, and let the world see what God is doing in your life. Let, let your life be that image of Jesus for this world to see. All right. Thanks, guys, for getting on here. Appreciate you and uh, really uh, are grateful for you getting on. And so let's pray. And then after that, we'll, we'll get off of here. But thank you again. I hope you have a great day uh, and, uh, and just so grateful for all of you guys. Thanks for getting on. I see Miss Agnes on here, my mom and dad. Uh, Bill, good to see you on here. Dee, good to have you on here. I'm praying for you. I uh, just know that. And uh, anyway, thankful for uh, you guys. So let's pray. God, thank you for all that you do. You're an amazing God. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. Uh, thank you for this new covenant relationship that we live in and, and, and that uh, Jesus died on the cross for us. And in him, we have forgiveness. We have freedom. God, we are being transformed into his uh, likeness, and we're thankful for that. And I pray that you would just give us the strength and the power to be uh, your, that image of Jesus in this world so people can see you. Uh, so, God, thank you for all that you do. I, I pray for everyone watching today and everyone that will watch that you'd give them wisdom today to live out their faith for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all, thanks uh, for tuning in. Uh, God bless you guys, and we will see you tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. We'll see you.